Hey guys, Rano here. Welcome back to Formula 2. The start here of the new F2 season. Took a break last year due to the, everything that was going on. We're back now for another full season. Going to be an 11 race championship. Where we're going to follow one team or one driver for each race. And then onto the first formation lap of this new season. To give you a quick rundown of the drivers and the teams. It's Dan Tate who takes pole with the Dams team alongside the HW way of Artem Markolov. Got Robert Schwartzman in the Primer in third, Jack Aitken in the Campos P4, head of the other Orange squad, the MP Motorsport driver, Felipe Drogovic. Then we have Pedro Piquet P6 as the lead Chiroux, head of Marcus Armstrong in seventh in the lead of the ARTs. Then come the two Tridents of Marino Sato and Roy Nassani, and 10th place in the car lane is Yuki Tsunoda. 11th goes to the lead Uni Virtuosi of Kalamailot, with the returning Tadasuke Makino in 12th, and the lead of the new high-tech team joining F2 for this year, Sergei Sorokin P13, head of Jehan Daruvla and Max Gunther 14th and 15th. Junior Lacy Lacey in the second HWA is in P16, head of the other high-tech of Luca Giotto. Then we have Sean Gleil P18, Head of Christine Lungard P19, Guan Yu Zhou Downey P20, head of Gilherme Sumeya, and in bringing up the rear, the other Chiroux of Louis Delatraz, who unfortunately did manage to set a lap in qualifying due to a technical issue with his car. Now, for this race, we're going to be following on board with the pole sitter and the very early now championship leader, Dan Tecto. In this, it is, you get four points for pole, and this being a spec series, those four points, the pole positions could end up deciding who wins the championship with how close the cars are, because all the cars that qualified were separated only by six tenths of a second, so it's very close here. Although it is very difficult to overtake around the circuit, which also makes this race a wild card race, where the top 20 drivers will score points using the wild card point system from the F1. Now coming to the five red lights for the start of the new F2 season. Long hold. And lights out, and away we go. Looks like a pretty good start there from Martin Markov. We get a bit bogged down there from Dan Tickton, who's losing a few places now into Town 1. He's going to be stuck here on the outside line. He's going to get three wide, possibly into Town 1. And now it's Martin Markov now takes the lead of the race, and Tickton gets four star wide. You've got Aiken and Schwarzman looking to make a move through. And they make a move stick there on the early championship leader. And if you see his screen freezes, that's what fought you in the game. It wasn't quite on, on the recording, so I'm hoping everything still works out okay. But now pulling it through there, Markov already pulling away, got a convincing lead already after. After one sector of the race that we cut through here, we basically miss out the, the, the long straight and the second half of the Essex section. They can now straight through now into what would be the end of the second sector now on the full circuit. And they've got Dan Tate on there. P4 looking to hold off just after one of the tries made a really good start. Try to look, look to be much improved. And we've got started there up into P5. Of course, these all being spec cars. Of course, it, it was about the, the quality of the drivers and the team personnel you have because the cars themselves are the same. But if you have a mechanic, you can find out something extra, set up a car different, that, that can make a difference of where your team is at the front or at the back. Like I said, only 6 tenths separating all the drivers in qualifying, so it's still very close, depending on no matter really what team you're in. We've got Tatum though, gaining on the back though of Robert Schwarzman, the Russian driver, who is part of the MP Motorsport program, but also part of the Ferrari Driver Academy. Going to want to be looked to showing, looking to outshine his teammate Max Gunther, who's in the, who's in the other promo, but isn't actually part of the, of the FBA. We've got Artem Markov, he's been, a, he's been around F2 in GP2 for a very long time. Going to be looking to move up to F1 pretty soon. He came close in 2017, but doing battle with Charles Leclerc for the championship, but didn't quite work out for the Russian. And he's going to be leading out with the HWA squad, which previously was the Arden team last time we raced here in F2. Uh, moving a bit further on, looking here at the number 7 Carlin of Yuki Sonoda. He's got one of the Univerti of they have Callum Isla around got the, the red livery car here because Isla is part of the Fry Driver Academy. The other Uni Virtuosi car is yellow. That's Guan Yu Zhou who is part of the Rano Driver Academy. Uh, once again, apologies here for the screen freeze mark. Kakala Marlott but gaining on the back of the car. He's going to pull to the inside line with the DRS. The DRS will be very powerful on the one DRS straight that we actually have on this circuit. Now it makes me see he goes a little bit wider through the corner exit. But imagine he's just to make the move stick there. And uh, I can say the screen freezes aren't as common in future videos, just for some reason around this USA track. I didn't really agree with my PC on the replay footage for some reason. And also a little bit here on the actual race footage here as well, but there's something we have to deal with for this race. Although we have Gilhaime Semeya now out of the Grand Prix, you've got a safety car now! Four hours into this race, the safety car is now deployed, let's slow down there to match the Delta. But Gilhaime Semeya, I mean he was down in 21st anyway, so... What are we working at who actually, actually drop down to the back now? And there's an engine failure. The Mecha Chrome engine, which is basically a rebadged Renault engine, giving away there for the Brazilian on his debut. 
Unfortunately, yeah, and Anthony, well, really, you have to go all the way up the straight now, trying to pull off the racing line as much as he can. Of course, don't want to divert to the, to the inside, it's causing a massive oil spill across the circuit. The, the engine's still going using the, using the momentum that it had, but eventually manages to find a place to pull off the circuit. And the, the Brazilian looking to become the next Brazilian sensation after the previous F2 champion, Sergio Sete Camara, moved up to Formula 1. And we've got Djokovic, PK and Samaya looking to do the same now. Onto the end of lap 6, safety car now coming in at the end of this lap. We're going to resume racing once we've crossed the start finish line. It's like an F1. The race, you can't overtake unless someone has an issue until you cross the start finish line, not the safety car line anymore. Once again, it's also Moklov now with the convincing lead already pulling away from Jack Aiken in the Campos. Now we should turn one, an easy convincing lead once again already for Moklov. So he aced that start to perfection. Got the Campos who were, who were pretty good last time we raced, but they have lost a few of their chief mechanics who actually went to the new high tech squad. So interesting to see how the rivalry ends up being between those two teams throughout the season. They've still got here yeah, Sato in the trial, they're still doing very well. Trying to really have pun punched above the way. They had a few glimmers of brilliance last year or last last season with their drivers Giuliano Alessi and Ralph Bosch on. Of course, Alessi moving to the HWA squad for this year. Masato though, and to be fair, Nasani as well. Looking to show some comparison with Nasani on his return as well. They got Felipe Drugovich as well, who didn't do very well in F3 last time. He was in the junior category, but looks to be showing much better pace here with MP in F2. Because sometimes you get, if you get a faster car that just ends up suiting your driving style more, you kind of end up doing a lot better than how you were doing in F3. Because I think he only had a few points finishes last year. And we're looking to even out outscore his points on his F2 debut to what he scored in F3 last year. Well, now that we've got the two Carlins together now, we've got Sonoda being caught now by his teammate Daruvla, proven now part of the Red Bull Driver Academy, previously part of the Ferrari Academy. And these two, the teammates and both in the same driver program, so they're going to be looking to have some first competition now because there could be a seat opening up at Alpha Tauri soon in Formula 1. These two are going to be, going to be in prime position to get that seat. And now then, no DRS yet, and he's literally going to be able to safety car, so he won't be able to wait for the next two laps. But now with the solution, he's going to try to make a move into turn one, he's gaining on the back of his Japanese teammate into turn one. Look like he's there to make a move, then we're looking now at the lead of the high tech, the new team on the grid for this year. Being chased down by Tanisuke and Mikino. We're going to make a move, make a move around the outside line, Soraki versus Mikino on his return. And he keeps his now through the SS section. So as I said, it's Makina gets his nose in front, he gets squeezed out though. Soraki being very aggressive on his return to the second tier of motorsport. He just managed to squeeze out the Japanese driver. And behind them, we got Giuliano Alessi. We know, we know that HWA's got pace. We've seen his teammate leading the race, so there's pace to come yet from these pink cars. Although they are sponsored by BWT, they don't really have any association with Aston Martin. But if Alessi or Markov do pretty well, then they could, could well end up being in the Aston Martins in the near future. And they've got this whole pack of cars still near the back. Then we, now we've got Louis Deltra, who unfortunately now has dropped back down into last place after not being able to set a time in qualifying. We've seen these teammates up inside the top 10, so there is pace yet to come from these Shrews cars, but being stuck in this train of cars, there's not really a whole lot that Deltra can really do. Now they're onto lap 11. It's getting a lot darker now. There's actually a few drops of rain there on the screen. It's starting to rain here now in the opening race of this F2 season. And we're still catching up there to the back of Schwarzman because everyone started on the medium tyres. There's not going to be a lot of difference in the tyre wear, so everyone, everyone must have been having the same idea, sticking it out to the rain comes, and then hopefully it rains enough to go into Inters before you have to make a piss on it. There we've got yellow flags in front, so someone there got an issue, the car going slowly, got Jack Aiken going slowly, he's made contact! He's made contact with Schwarzman swinging all over the road, he must have got some oil on his tyres, losing the rack of his car in the rain as well. But Jack Aiken from second place, the Brit who's former teammates to George Russell, so he's no slouch as well. Now, now Schwarzman has to go into the pits with their damage there to his front wing. Jack Aiken is now out of the Grand Prix with Schwarzman into the pit lane now. Is he going to risk it? Because we don't actually have intermediate tyres in Formula 2. It's the two sets of dries and then full wets. I don't know why there's no intermediates, but that's just how the ruling is. So, I have to test your wet weather skills here in F2 pretty early. Now Schwarzman with half a front wing now forced into the pits lane now. And what tyres is he going on to? You're going to change front wing because with less personnel you can't actually change the front tyres yet because they have to change the front wing first as well. And what tyres is it going to be? I can't see any groovies, grooves there on the tyres so it's going to be a set of the soft tyres there for... Well, which one's well, the softer tyres. Actually it's the set of the super softs because we still use the old tyre names here in F2 but it's the softer compound going on the car of Robert Schwarzman is going to be almost a lap down because now we've got Louis Delatra so we're already halfway around the lap and that's race over now for the Russian from, P from P3 up to P2 but unfortunately got caught up there with the retirement of Shaq Aiken so now then it's still Artem Markov now that leads the way and with the rain still coming down it's going to be well what everyone else can do 
Now that puts Dan Tatum now up into second place, and Dan Tatum just taking it very, very gingerly here on these on these tyres. Now we're gonna, are we going to be boxing now at the end of this lap? Yes, we are. Tatum making the call out to box to box in for wet tyres. There's no point going into another set of dries because they, they may be grippier. We're going to be losing so much time. Let's we'll see what Mark Love does up in front. Is he going to stay out? Because the race leader, it's his to lose now. It's dearest now. He's disabled, and that's universally the. The time where you come into the pit lane, they're confirming to the pit crew once again that Tito will be pitting at the end of this lap. And we've got Sato up in P3 behind. So Sato in the Trident could get Trident's first podium in F2 in GPT for a very long time. And it's going to be a set of the wet tyres. Actually, no, it's another set of the medium tyres. Is that? I can't quite see from this camera angle, but it's not wet tyres. Hang on, you got the team. They're just sending back out on a set of dry tyres. What are HWA doing? Now we've got the Carlins, got the, the damn squad is already coming in for a set of the wet tyres for Dan Tatum. And he's being held here by a Q coach, just manages to find a gather to come back out now onto the circuit. Says wet tyres for the damn driver. The driver who was in P2 and will probably be in a net P2 once everyone else makes a stop. So what tyres has everyone else come out on? And there's dry tyres again for PK. No one else has gone onto wet tyres, it seems. They're onto another set of the medium compound. They're not going to have to stop again anyway. What Has everyone forgot how Formula 2 works? We had a season out, I get it. But everyone, apart from uh, apart from Primer in respect, putting Schwarzman onto a set of the super soft tyres. And actually now here comes the SMP driver on a set of the super soft tyres. But everyone else has to stop again anyway. They've not used the other compound of tyres. Was was. Was it? Have they been smoking around the back of the paddock with Claire, the interviewer, with all the questions she's been asking recently? What, is, what has gone on with this entire grid? Every other driver, apart from Tickton and Schwarzman, has changed onto another compound of tyres. So every other driver on the grid is going to have to make another pit stop. HWA, Austin Margrave, he's going to, to pull out the last of his life. He has to pit again. He's going to lose like another 25, 30 seconds. And he's going to, to pull out a massive gap. If it's not time to switch to dry tyres yet, and I don't know what's been going on, but every other driver, as you can see, is switching through the grid. It's on a set of medium tyres. Again, they've either not stopped yet, or they're on a set of medium tyres. I don't really know what's been going on, honestly. I have... I, I, I don't know. We're back on board then with Artem Markov on a set of medium tyres, and he's coming back in once again, what I'm saying this entire lap. Every other team, they've been bamboozled by the rain. And now Dan Tegton, the only driver who gambled, the damn team gambled on the wet tyres. And now he now leaves the race, but every other, I mean, they would have known that every other driver was going to fit the wrong compound of tyres again. And now he's going to come in. What tyres is it going to be for the HWA driver? And now it's a set of the wet tyres. Why didn't they just stay out for one more lap? Every other driver's in the pit lane again. Everyone's back in. What has gone on in this race? I would say dams with the masterclass strategy, but it's the obvious strategy. It's raining. You come in for wet tyres, not the tyres you just took off. Well, it's not even the other compound you switched to. And Robert Schwartz was now back up into second place. The Russian driver risking it to the end of the race on a set of the super soft tyres. I mean, they're going to be grippier than the mediums. And he's he's technically, he's done his tyre change. He's on a different compound of tyres. He's done the mandatory pit stop. Is he going to risk it out? Can he, can he even get back? He was in last place a lap ago. And now he's back in P2 with this... I don't even know. It's just the, the strategy meltdown that's gone on in this Grand Prix. Can Schwarzman hold on to second place? He's going to have to tiptoe around. His tyres are going to have absolutely zero temperature in them. The Russian driver in P2. He's got Markov behind who's going to be absolutely fuming and genuinely confused, as I am, about what's gone on with the strategy with every other team apart from Dams. And like I said, Primer, they came in early. They changed the tyres. They only pitted, was it a lap earlier than everyone else? And they remember to change to a different compound of tyres. And we're not operating under new rules here in F2, so I, I don't even know what's gone on. What's happened here in Formula 2 in this race? We've got Dan Tatum coming up now to start what is probably the final lap of the race. Or is this the final lap of the race? I'm not actually sure what lap we're on. But we've got Markov there right behind us. Dan Tatum goes very slowly. I think this might actually be the final lap of the race. Dan Tatum is going very slowly. He's, he's got an issue. He's crawling to run out of fuel. Or somebody's got some sort of drive issue coming up to the line though. Is this the end of the race for Dan Tatum? It is the checker flags there. Dan Tatum wins the opening race of this Formula 2 Championship. You've got Robert Schwarzman who's just going to hold on to P2. And Artin Markolov, who had this race in the bag, comes across the line in P3. I I don't even know what's happening in this race. Louis Deletraz gets driver of the day. I'm not sure what happened there. He was in 21st place last time we saw him. I don't even know what's happened in this Grand Prix, honestly. 
I mean, that, that is Formula 2 in a nutshell. Complete and utter chaos, but damn, they kept their heads when everyone else around them completely lost theirs. And Dan Tatum, he started on pole. He's got the race win. The championship leader, part of the Williams Driver Academy. Going to be looking to take a seat in the near future. Looking to take a seat if Huckenberg or Nicholas Tatum with a damn screen celebrating the only team who knew what to do with their strategy. And we've got Felipe Djokovic finishing in P5. Looks very disappointed. I mean, if he started on wet tyres, he'd have been in second place. He'd have been on the podium as well. But everyone just got the strategy completely wrong. I said, I'm getting saying, I have no idea what just happened in this race. Why this race happened like it did. Why everyone just forgot the wet tyres existed. But now it's the podium. The celebrations now for Dan Tatum, the damn driver. They actually got Markov in P2, so Schwartz somehow had a, a five second penalty for that contact with Aiken, it seems. This is time for the champagne and time for everyone to. I, I mean, if I was down to. If I, if I was Markov, I'd be having quite the glug of that champagne because what has just happened? Taking a look now at the end results, and it actually wasn't a wild card race. Just to add a bit more to the confusion, it's the regular point system got thought being the short circuit. I remembered it being a wild card race, but that was in, in the F1 race to come next week. It's a race where every driver will score points. But it's Dan Tatum who takes the win, but not the fastest lap though, the two points for that go to Austin Markov in second. The rubbish Schwarzman finishing in P3, getting with a 5 second penalty. They've got Pedro Pique up into P4 in the Chiroos, and then off Felipe Djokovic. Then we've got Mark Armstrong in P6 as the lead AOT, with Yuki Tsunoda finishing in P7. Sergei Sorokin on his return gets up into 8th place in the high tech. With Max Gunther in the second Premier finishing in P9. And Sean Galeo in the top 10 for Dams. With Rina Salto in 11th place. And Lumi Delatraz gets up into P12. So I'm guessing Chiroux must have given him wet tyres as well on the, the, the first stop. So Chiroux, Dams and Premier were the only teams in this race to actually know what they were doing. And with the driver's points being basically the same as the race results, this being the first race of the season, going straight on to the team's championship standings. And it's Dams with the early lead on 27 points. They've got a 10 point lead over HWA Race Lab. With Prima in P3 one point behind. We've got Shrews in P4, who were previously the, the Sauber Junior team, but changed the name back to Shrews for this year on 11 points. And they're three points ahead of MP Motorsport. And it's all very close in this mid-pack. Then only one point behind them, you've got ART on seven. And then one point behind them, you've got Carlin on six. And then one point behind them, you've got High Tech, the new team. In eighth place, on five points. And rounding off the point scoring team so far is Trident in P9 with two points for Marino Sato. Leaving only Uni Virtuosi and Campos to get off the ground this year. If you enjoyed this very chaotic race, the opening round of the Formula 2 season, then please leave a like on this video, leave a comment down below about your thoughts on this race, about what happened. Because if you can try and work out and explain what happened in this race, I'd be very appreciative of that because I don't even know what happened at the end of this race. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.